Let's talk suicide prevention and potentially give you a different perspective on the whole situation. So the other day there was a case obviously in my hometown and fortunately they're obviously getting the help and assistance that they require now so that's at least another one saved in effect. But when we have a look at suicide prevention in total and when we have a look at the rates that are actually going on it's far higher than that of which we would expect it to be. And ultimately there's an 80-20 split more tailored towards men over women, but that's just statistics. But every one of these people, regardless of gender, is actually just a statistic. And the question then becomes, how do we change these statistics and make them a lot less and obviously get the required help to those that actually need it? I'm gonna give you a different change of perspective. So when we have a look at the change of perspective, when we have a look at suicide in general, we have to understand that there is a loss or some lack of identity or associated identity. And then what happens is that identity itself is then questioned to the point of existential crisis. And what we mean by existential crisis is that the person's existence and who they are, what they're about, what they do, and everything associated with such then has to be evaluated and basically revised because that identity is now old, outdated, and doesn't actually come back to the whole growth and progress side of where they're actually going. And therefore it's no longer consistent with that. But if you haven't actually done a lot of work, this can be quite daunting. And the reason it can be quite daunting is because you have a fixed way of being or a fixed way of dealing or associating with your environment. And that environment will then dictate to you where you're at and where you're growing or where you're subsequently not growing. But at the point of getting to the place of suicide, people are not understanding that it's not a physical death, but it's actually a metaphorical death of the old identity and that very old existence. So what we have to start doing is talking more openly, dealing with the stigma around mental health issues, and obviously having a look into the more, well, we'll say spiritual side, but that spiritual side is based solely around you as the human being, actually existing in a mind-body-soul connection that is beneficial and aligned to you. And when we get back to that aligned existence, we can then start shaping the future identity and that future identity will then come into play and therefore be usable moving forwards. But in order to get to that identity, we have to go back through all the clutter. We have to go back through all the conditioning, the patterns, outdated habits and behaviors that are associated with that old existence. And then what we have to do is we have to make sure that they're in a position to solidify our future existence and therefore provide the foundation for growth and learning. And when we get to the position whereby that growth and learning is then being used foundationally, then we can build the existence upon that that then needs to then go into the next chapter or the next set of lessons and learning that we have to then subject ourselves to for future growth. And when we have future growth, we can then start to consistently revise who we are as individuals and have a constant state of renewal rather than being in a position whereby we feel that we have to take the life that is the current existence in order to then potentially, or based on your belief structures and systems, if you believe in reincarnation, come back in order to either revise those current lessons and learning or we're getting into a position whereby we then don't. So the question is, how can we get the access, the knowledge and the information to those that need it now? And then what we can do is we can then make the changes in this current life in order to then benefit everybody because your mess ultimately is gonna be somebody else's message. And how do we then get that turning point and start turning most of these lives around? So if you've got any answers or if you have any solutions that you yourself have found, then drop them in the comments below. 
but for everything else, videos that are explaining the backgrounds to all of these things. And then based on those backgrounds, we can then start to bring a bit more education around in order to then prevent such events moving forward. And those events that are there moving forward will then mean that we can subsequently save lives and we can then get a better understanding of exactly what needs to be done in order to make future prevention an actual necessity rather than an option. But as always, until next time, trust the process and it's bye for now.